Philadelphia Eagles general manager Howie Roseman drafted not one, but two defensive backs in the first two rounds. Yes, this is real life. But then he went back to his roots to end day two. We'll recap it all on today's edition of Locked On Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Welcome in Eagles fans to another NFL Draft edition of the show. It's brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. They help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. The Philadelphia Eagles, I think, are absolutely crushing the 2024 NFL Draft. They have some more work to do today. A lot of picks in rounds four through seven. Still think they could use a linebacker, offensive line depth, another pass catcher at tight end and or receiver, potentially another running back. But through two days, the Eagles, I don't know how you can't grade this in A+. Obviously, we know they fulfilled my draft dream of getting Quinion Mitchell in the first round, not even needing to trade up, getting him at 22 Thought that was never going to happen. I would never imagine a day I'd see Howie Roseman actually draft a cornerback in the first two rounds since in my lifetime he had never drafted a corner in the first round, and he only took one second rounder, and that was Sidney Jones. So Thursday already was kind of just a surreal day, right? And that's kind of been the theme of the offseason is Howie just having kind of an outlier few months Signing, of course, Saquon Barkley in free agency as well. Like, the guy does not pay running backs. He doesn't draft corners in the first round or most of the time the second round. Well, he said, watch this. Hold my beer. Not only am I going to sign Saquon Barkley, draft Quinion Mitchell, I am going to now in the second round trade up for another defensive back. And I don't know what you're going to call him by position, but he's a corner. He's a safety. He's everything that Howie Roseman normally does not draft. It's Iowa's Cooper DeGean. The fact that he double dipped and almost did a Lido Shepard, Sheldon Brown type of combination draft is, again, just surreal and in such a positive way. You know, he did it with Sidney Jones and Razul Douglas back in 2017, but I don't know. This, this feels a lot different. This feels like Howie is definitely learning from his mistakes in the past, and he's very committed to rebuilding this secondary with playmakers, with speed with young, long-term sustainability. And that's what Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene present. He did trade up, though. He had to get up from 50 to 40 to get DeGene, who surprisingly slipped out of day one. I thought he was going to be a first-round pick, and I'm elated that they got him in day two. Like Nolan Smith last year, the fact that you got Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith, I couldn't believe it. I would have been okay with Cooper DeGene on day one, kind of like Nolan Smith on day one last year without a Jalen Carter. This year without a Quinion Mitchell, I would have been okay with Cooper DeGene. The fact that you got both is just how he did it again. Everybody's saying it on Twitter. He traded 50 and 53 and pick 161 for 40 and 78 in round three. He took Jalex Hunt, the edge rusher from Houston Christian. We'll get into that in segment two. But Cooper DeGene is such an exciting prospect. And does he have the boundary CB1 upside of a Quinion Mitchell? I don't think so. And it's why I would have been okay with him on day one, but I would have not have felt nearly as excited as I was regarding Mitchell. I don't think he's a CB1 boundary corner long term. You know, he's a little stiff. I think against more explosive route runners like a Devontae Smith, he might struggle. But he can still be a pretty solid high-end CB2 on the boundary. But that's going to be doing him a disservice if you stick him on the boundary. Like, he can probably – he's got plenty of long speed, really good ball skills. Like, this kid has, to me, the most natural hands of any defensive back in this class. Five interceptions in 2022, a bunch of pick sixes. Like, his body control along the sidelines is incredible. The dude's an athlete. So he would have been fine as a CB1 or CB2. I just don't think he has an elite ceiling there. But what he does have an elite ceiling with is just – a Swiss Army Knife star-like role where he can play on the boundary if there's injuries. He can play in the slot. He's such a good tackler. He's a physical player. You can put him in the box. Again, he can have that star role. I think he's going to translate to safety really well. Like Cooper DeGene, what, what is he going to be? Don't, like, I don't think you want to put him in a box. Like He's going to be everything. 
for this defense. Like Quinion Mitchell, you know what he's going to be. Howie Roseman said it himself. The tone of his press conferences on day one and day two are so different. They asked him about Mitchell being just a boundary corner or if he can play in the slot on day one. He said, of course, he has some inside-out versatility, but we want him to focus on being the outside CB1 of the future. Whereas when it came to Cooper DeGene, he's like, this, this kid's a football player. Like, just get him on the football field. And I think that's totally right. Vic Fangio is going to have a field day coming up with creative ways to use this kid. And the other exciting thing about this is – you're going to see a lot of defensive back heavy packages. You're going to see a lot of nickel, a lot of dime. You're going to see three corners out there at a time. You're going to see three safeties. Like there's going to be packages where it's Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, Darius Slay. You could even throw out Sidney Brown, Reed Blankenship, and Chauncey Gardner Johnson or Avante Maddox, Keely Ringo. You've got Isaiah Rogers still. Like this defensive backfield has so much promise, both short term and long term. And the fact that you got Cooper DeGene added into that equation. We had already said that Thursday night after Quinion Mitchell. The fact that you got DeGene is just, to me, a, a slam dunk pick. And it's, again, another playmaker with, as I mentioned earlier, great ball skills. That is something last year the Eagles were so desperate for. They lacked that without Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with the regression of James Bradbury, the injuries to Avante Maddox, the okay play of Darius Slay. They didn't have ball hawks. They didn't have playmakers. And now you get CGJ back. You get Quinion Mitchell, who's one of the best ball hawks of this class. And now you get, to me, the most natural receiver when it comes to defensive backs, like a, pl a player that's going to finish pass breakups and turn them into interceptions. That's Cooper DeGene. By the way, he can also return kicks. I know Britton Covey had a great 2024. I should say 2023. But in 2024, if you need another guy as a kick returner, as a punt returner, like, that's Cooper DeGene. He is going to be everything. Like, the, I want to say the Christian McCaffrey of the defense. Like, that's the kind of athlete he is where just don't put him in a box. Like, he's not a boundary corner. He's not a slot. He's not a safety. He's not a returner. He's not a linebacker. The dude, as cheesy as it sounds, is just a football player. And I think the Eagles recognized not only – because it wasn't really an area of need anymore, but – he can do anything for you, and he was just too good of a player to pass up, falling all the way to 40. Like Cooper DeGene, to me, again, was he a top three corner prospect in this class? No. Was he a top 20, or I should say a top 15 to 20 pick? Probably not. But was he somebody that should have fell to 40? I don't think so. I mean, you could have made the argument he was CB3, depending on how you felt about Nate Wiggins. You could have said he was CB4 depending on how you feel about Kool-Aid McKinstry, the Eagles got two defensive backs in the first two rounds. Like, I just can't believe it. I mean, it feels like Christmas morning. But Howie Roseman did get back to his roots at the end of day two. He drafted an edge rusher after moving down from 53 to 78 in the third round. Jalex Hunt from Houston Christian. What are the Eagles getting in Hunt, and what's his role both short-term and long-term? We'll get into that coming up next right here as we roll along on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Today's episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, we are brought to you today by LinkedIn Jobs. They get you the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. They have the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team. As I said, faster and for free. They're not just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional through LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's linkedin.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Louis DiBiase riding solo, day three of the NFL draft, about to get underway. So while you're listening, get recapped on day two, which was a great day for the Philadelphia Eagles. To me, stealing Iowa's Cooper DeGene and then drafting Jalex Hunt after trading down from 53 to 78. 
from round two to round three, the edge rusher out of Houston Christian. We'll get into that in a second. But, guys, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume because of all that ridiculous shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The J. Lux Hunt pick, that is... Back to what the Philadelphia Eagles do. I could not believe it. I thought I was dreaming that the Eagles drafted a corner in the first round. I thought I was on drugs <laughs> when they drafted another cornerback slash safety, a Swiss Army knife defensive back in Cooper DeGene in round two. But not only taking him like if he fell at 50 or 53, but trading up from 50 to 40 to get DeGene. I couldn't believe it, but I can because that's what Howie Roseman does. He switches things up all the time, like signing Saquon Barkley. However, one thing I will say, it was the least surprising thing ever that he took a lineman before the draft was over in the second and third round. There was just no way he was going to go outside the top three rounds without a, without a trench player. Like, that's just – that's what the Philadelphia Eagles do. I'm surprised it was an edge rusher. I thought it was going to be an offensive lineman. Uh, but the way the board fell, the linemen went early. Like, there was just such a run on tackles in the first round, you know, the first half of the second round. Guys, I really liked, like, Roger Rosengard just went too early. So maybe there just wasn't a player worth it. Um, I thought maybe a defensive tackle, but how he went back into the edge pool getting Jalex Hunt. And I, again – I didn't need an edge rusher. I think they have a really good group right now with Josh Sweat, with Bryce Huff, Nolan Smith, and Brandon Graham. But, again, outside of Huff and Smith, you have no guarantees beyond 2024 from contracts and, you know, just a production standpoint as well. So I, I get the pick. And Jay Lux Hunt's a guy that, again, I didn't love bringing in an edge, but Jay Lux Hunt is my kind of edge rusher. Bet on traits, and that's what you're getting with Hunt. He's raw for this position. Like, this is a player that – Starting his college career at Cornell was a safety, but you look at the length, you look at the speed, the explosive bend off the line of scrimmage, he can be another fastball. He, this is exactly what Howie Roseman loves in a pass rusher. This is why he loved Hassan Riddick. This is why he loved Nolan Smith, and this is why he loved Bryce Huff. Like, Jalex Hunt fits the criteria of what the Eagles want, and he has that linebacker edge safety versatility where Vic Fangio will probably he drop – drop him back in coverage long-term if Hunt becomes a staple piece of this defense. He actually graded out a 9.22 out of 10 RAS score, raw athletic score, and you know Howie Roseman likes to have those guys in the nines for athleticism. Like, he wants athletes. I want athletes. I love the traits. It's a very Howie Roseman pick from positional value, from the style of player. 4-6 speed, Jalex Hunt, again, a former safety. That shouldn't surprise you. Um, I think he fits this defense perfectly. And the good thing is, like, yes, he's raw. He did have to change positions in college. But he doesn't have to be one of your top four guys this year. It'd be great if he could become that player. But you still have Brandon Graham for another year. You do have Josh Sweat under contract for at least one more year. We'll see what happens after that. You do have Bryce Huff and Nolan Smith. So Hunt right now can develop. And that's what Howie even said in his press conference yesterday. Is like he doesn't. We can come in. We can get him in the building and we can just develop this kid. And he doesn't have to come in right away and replace a Hassan Reddick. Like, that's not what this kid has to be as a third-round pick as a rookie. But I will say long-term, like, if things were work out with Josh Sweat long-term and Bryce Huff and Nolan Smith and you have Jalex Hunt, that's a really, really promising group of four edge rushers long-term. So I'm not too shocked that how he went with an edge rusher. Uh, I'm not shocked with the style of player he got either. I'm not honestly surprised Jalex Hunt fell to the third round. The NFL loves these kind of edge rushers now. It's why a Nolan Smith was a first-round pick where a few years ago, or even like you go back 10 years ago, Nolan Smith probably has to play stand-up linebacker. He's probably not going to make it in that era as an edge rusher. They weren't looking for that style of player. I think Jalex Hunt, too, the modern-day NFL calls for athletes at every position, and it allows a Jalex Hunt to thrive on the edge as a linebacker, as a pass rusher. I'm really excited to see what they do with him on defense. There's just so much upside with this defense now. Like, there is no, almost zero proven ability outside of, you know, Josh Sweat, Jalen Carter, um, who else, honestly? Darius Slay, I guess, right? And Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. But 
it's such a young and exciting group of players that you're like, yeah, we have to see, we have to wait and see on Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene and Sidney Brown, Keely Ringo, Isaiah Rogers, Eli Ricks, Jalex Hunt, Nolan Smith, Nicobe Dean, like the list goes on and on. We have no idea. These guys could all be terrible. But at the same time, there is a lot of talent there. There's a lot of youth. There's a lot of athleticism. There's a lot of college production. There's a lot of upside. And now it's time to go to work, put them on the football field, and see if Vic Fangio can develop them. It's a, it's a new era for the Eagles defense. I can't remember the last time the Eagles defense was put together with this many young players. But that's just the timeline of where the Eagles are at right now because the offense, he did this with the offense. He invested so many early picks and let them all grow together, and then he paid everybody. I mean, every player on the Eagles' offense, essentially, it feels like is making top 10 money for their position, and almost everybody is, honestly, which is crazy enough. Outside of Cam Jurgen and Tyler Steen, I believe, yeah, everybody on the Eagles' offense is getting top 10 money for their position. So now with just the, the timeline there, you can't invest that much money in the Eagles defense, so you got to go young and you got to invest these current top picks into that unit. And that's what the Eagles have done in this draft with three straight defensive prospects Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, and then Jalix Hunt. I'm going to wrap things up. Draft grades for two days for the Philadelphia Eagles coming up next, right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Today's episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast were brought to you today by Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a competitive person. I think that's true. Gino can attest to that. Everybody's got a competitive side, though, right? My competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you can play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with your friends. You can charge them rent on iconic properties, just like in classic Monopoly. But now you can also heist their vaults of riches for yourself. The leaderboards show you who the biggest Monopoly tycoons are. But it's not just the competitive side that loves it. You can and also team up with your friends. Teamwork makes the dream work. People all around the world in time tournaments do team up to earn huge rewards. So get in the game, join your friends, download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or on Google Play. All right, we're wrapping up this Saturday edition of Locked on Eagles. By the time the Eagles got done with their draft picks on Friday night, it was already time for a Saturday morning show. The Eagles trade up for Cooper DeGene, giving up the 50th pick and 53, also 161 on day three for the 40th overall selection, and then pick 78 in round three. So they go up and get Cooper DeGene, who to me had no business falling outside of day one. And then they take Houston Christian edge rusher Jalix Hunt, who again is a converted safety Started his collegiate career at Cornell, playing safety. Raw athletic score of a 9.22 out of 10. That is a Howie Roseman pick. He prioritizes now speed and athleticism on the edge. It's a small group. You know, I think the undersized edge rushers right now might be a little bit of a concern when it comes to the run game. Josh Sweat is your only more traditional 4-3 defensive end, right? Bryce Huff is more of a fastball off the edge, undersized. What the New York Jets normally was just a pass rushing specialist. Nolan Smith, we know he dropped a little bit in last year's draft because of the size. Jalex Hunt this year, a round three pick. A lot of that had to do with the size. But again, when you look at the modern day NFL, all these quarterbacks, the mobility of a Jalen Hurts, of a Josh Allen, of a Lamar Jackson, of a Patrick Mahomes, you got to have guys that can run, right? I mean, you got to have guys that can go sideline to sideline, and you got to take chances on those kind of players, even if they have a lower floor. You have to prioritize the ceiling. And that's why even, like, the Devin White signing makes so much sense at linebacker. Like, the dude got benched last year in the playoffs. He's a former top-five pick, but you got to take that chance. And I think that's what the Eagles are prioritizing at every position right now, not just the edge, but when you look at what they did at corner in these first two rounds, Quinion Mitchell, a 4-3-3 speed cornerback that can mirror, go hip-to-hip -hip with the best receivers in the game. Cooper DeGene, I think a little stiffer when it comes to short area explosiveness, mirroring receivers and press man coverage, but I will say at the same time, he does have that long-range speed. This is a kid that was a track star. He was a basketball player. He returned kicks. He took him to the house at Iowa. I think he has the most natural hands of any defensive back in this pool. When you look at his body control along the sidelines, like that's a playmaker too. That's a fast kid, and that's what the Eagles are looking for right now. I think, real quick, too, before I wrap things up, the return aspect of DeGene, I know Britton Covey last year was one of the more efficient punt returners in the NFL, had a breakout year for the Birds. At the same time, Cooper DeGene is really good in that area as well, and you 
potentially lost Boston Scott in free agency. I don't think he'll come back, and he was one of your primary kick returners last year. So you could still keep Britton Covey as a punt returner, depending on his new role, if he's going to play more receiver this year. I, I'm not sure if he'll compete with Devontae Parker and uh, Paris Campbell, but I digress. So at kick returner, Cooper DeGene could fit in with the new NFL rule as well. Like having that kind of weapon as a kick returner, I, I think it was Daniel Jeremiah that said it on his podcast that somebody's going to draft Cooper DeGene with the thought in mind that this kid could win you a game or two. Like with one or two big plays in the return game, he could be the difference in one or two really close games. And that's very significant when you add on top of it his potential as this star Swiss Army knife that's going to be able to play on the boundary, play in the slot, be a safety, a physical tackler. I think the Eagles have crushed this draft so far. They have a ton of picks today as well. Gino and I, we will, excuse me, we will be back on Monday for another show recapping the entirety of the Eagles' three-day NFL draft. For now, though, I'll say overall through two days after drafting Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, and Jalex Hunt, out of 10, a 9. Like, I don't want to go a perfect 10, right, because – I think there were some good players that I would have liked at linebacker or receiver. Or They still have some work to do with their offensive line depth, but to get DeGene and Mitchell, like I would have never imagined that. Kind of like last year, I would have said, okay, they could get just Jalen Carter or they could get just Nolan Smith. The fact that they came away with both of them is incredible. This year, it's the same thing. Like If the Eagles would have sat there at 22 and took Cooper DeGene because the scenario plays out where Quinion is a top 10, top 15 pick, I would have been happy. The fact that they got Quinion to fall in their lap at 22, you didn't have to trade any assets, and Cooper DeGene falls to pick 40, and you still, like, you had to trade up, you had to give up three picks, but you still got that 40th pick to get DeGene, and you got pick 78 to get Jalex Hunt. Howie Roseman killed it. Again, this is all on paper. We got to see it come to fruition on the football field, but overall, I'm pretty happy through two days. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. We will be back, as I said, on Monday, Monday through Friday. Even after the draft, we're still your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Louis DiBiase signing off. As always, thanks so much for downloading, watching, and listening, and let's go Birds.